Good afternoon. Welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart as we celebrate the liturgy of the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Catherine Mannion. During these weeks of September, the church is con continues to honor this season of creation, a time in which people of all faiths cherish our world as a gift from God and as a shared home, respecting the earth and its natural resources. We wish to thank you for continuing to observe careful social distancing, wearing your face coverings throughout Mass, and continuing the practice of walking around the back of the center to receive communion, if you are seated in the side aisles. The Mass today is being offered for the internal rest of Laura Perez Mesa. If you have a cell phone or pager, please make sure you silence during Mass. Please join in singing with the opening hymn, Sing in Your Church.
O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord. You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Having the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, 
did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. And at that, and at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. They're behind the glass. I can't tell. I can't tell where you're from. But anyway. From Maryville? Oh, Arizona. Okay. Okay, welcome. Welcome to them. All right. All right, I'm Father Francis. I forgot to mention that. So welcome to everybody. I remember um, I worked in a place, one job I had uh, before I went in the seminary, and I enjoyed it. A lot of interesting people working there. And I remember a, a lot of stories. In fact, uh, some of those jobs I've had, I didn't realize at the time, but it gave me a lot of homily material. So it's really, really come in handy. I didn't realize it would pay off like this. But um, one son said, said, and I remember one time, um, there was a young lady just out of college, and she had just started working there at that place where I worked. And, um, you know, she didn't know how to do some of the things that, that that's normal. You kind of learn a lot on the job. So I was working on one project, my particular project, and then she came to me and she said, well, we do my project uh, for me? And I said, well, I'd be happy to, but I'm kind of working on something right now as soon as I finish that. And she said, well, uh, well, that's okay. I'll do yours for you, and if you can do mine, okay? So I believed her. 
I was young, I was naive, you know, so I believed that she would actually do it. So I went home and did her uh, project. And then um, after that, I asked her the next day, she said, How, how's, that other thing? how's that other thing come along? You know, did you, uh, oh, well, yeah, I'll get it done. So it, it became clear to me after a week or two that she had no intention of doing it, absolutely no intention. Basically, she tricked me. She tricked me into kind of doing, um, you know, her, her project for her. So then, um, there's the opposite. I've known a lot of people in my, in my life where I've seen people kind of do the opposite. One example that kind of came to mind, there was a family who had uh, lost someone unexpectedly. There was a death in the family. And people were so nice. You know, they came up to the house. Some brought food and things like that. Um, I remember one guy in particular who went to the house. And it was in the summertime, and I guess the people there, the grass was kind of off, you know, they were uh, busy and uh, tending to their, their loved one. And one guy, he just uh, just came up with uh, his lawnmower and took it out of the pickup, mowed the grass for the people, never even went inside because he didn't want to bother them. So you kind of have, again, the two, two opposites. Someone that says they're going to do something, and they basically have no intention of ever doing it. You have someone else who doesn't even say they're going to do something, and yet they do something like that, a wonderful act of uh, kindness toward another person. So really two examples. And Jesus kind of talks about that in the Gospel. Two examples of uh, such people where uh, the one son, of course, says, Oh, sure, Dad, I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. He never does it. And then the other one, of course, that says, No, I'm not going to do it. He winds up doing it. Now this, um, this Gospel here, for a lot of years, I was very confused by this one part. Because Jesus, um, in his humility, he asked, you know, what is your opinion about this story? You know, who did the will of the Father? And the part that always confused me of this gospel was that they said the first one, the one um, who wouldn't, uh, said he wouldn't, they actually wound up doing it. And then Jesus said, tax collectors and prostitutes are getting into the kingdom before you. Now, I thought for many years that Jesus was saying, eh, wrong answer. You know, I, I thought he was, uh, kind of uh, chastising them for giving the wrong answer. But actually, that's, that's not the case. They actually gave the right answer. Well, what Jesus was trying to say was that they really kind of condemned themselves and that uh, they gave the right answer. And he was trying to say that uh, tax collectors and prostitutes, you know, people who really go against the will of God, they were like the first son who said he wouldn't do it, but then turned around and did it because they lived their, their life really saying no to God. But then they came back and did the right thing, just like that first son. Versus um, the chief priests and the elders that he was talking to, they were like the second son because um, in one sense, they were going around portraying that they were very holy people and um, really wanted to do the will of God. But yet they rejected Jesus himself. They rejected him. Now, um, if you think about it, there was one scenario, another possible scenario that Jesus never mentioned. You know, there's a possibility there could have been a third son that said, yes, Dad, I will do what you ask, and then also do it, right? He didn't mention that scenario, but his point was not to explore every possible scenario. His point was to contrast these two uh, different attitudes toward the faith. Um, number one, people who, who say yes um, to God, but they're really not doing God's will, versus the others who are living their lives apart from God, but then, uh, then repent. And, you know, the example that he used, of course, tax collectors, you know, anybody who worked for the IRS. So, okay, okay. But anyway, you know, but they were, uh, you know, as you know from your history, the, uh, you know, the IRS, or you know, bad people that worked for the IRS. But back then, you know, they were very uh, looked down upon because they were um, a lot of corruption. Basically, they would charge a lot more and, um, you know, just pocket the money. But the point is that Jesus was, you know, picking two of the most notorious characters of the time, you know, the, the greatest sinners, if you will, of the time, to show that, you know, God's mercy um, is boundless. God's mercy is boundless. And we can spend our, our, our good part of our life, you know, saying no to God. But yet if we eventually come around, really, and, and repent, and really finally say yes to God, he said, you know, you're, you're the ones that get it right. It'd be nice if people said yes to God their whole life and did the right thing. But that's really uh, not our nature because, you know, we sin. We have a sinful nature and all of us, all of us say no to God many times. And really the story is not just about two actual literal groups of people, 
But it really probably pertains to all of us, if you think about it in our lives, because every time we sin, we're saying no to God. You know, we're telling God, I don't want to do um, what you ask me to do, so all of us are like that. But then hopefully all of us um, really are like, um, you know, first time that we, we do turn around and do God's will. And that's, that's really what, what this is all about. So I hope that our, our, um, you know, our intentions are good and that we do say yes to God for most of our life. But above all, I pray that our, that our actions you know, really match that. And any time that we do sin, that we do come back um, to God. And above all, I pray that throughout most of our lives, that when it comes to our faith, that our actions speak louder than our words.
sacrifice and here is made acceptable to God and Almighty Father. Grant us, so merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord.
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
curriculum materials have arrived. Um, if you need to register your child, your child, please see the link. Um, please, you can call the office um, for information on that. Um, for inquiries about the books, you can call the parish office or stop by the parish office to pick them up. Um, thank you to all the parishioners who have donated to the program this year. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.